good, Ursula. Run me to my cousin Beatrice and desire her to come. I will, lady. And go hither. Well. Troth, I think your other rubato were better. No, pray thee, good Meg, I'll wear this. By my troth's not so good, and I warrant your cousin will say so. My cousin's a fool, and thou art another. I wear none but this. Ah, I like the new tie within excellently. If the hair were a thought browner, and your gown is a most rare fashion of faith. I saw the Duchess of Milan's gown that they pray so. Oh, that exceeds, they say. <laughs> Troth's but a nightgown in respect to yours. Cloth of gold of cuts, laced with silver, set with pearls, down sleeves, side sleeves, and skirts, round underborn with a bluish tinsel. But for a fine, quaint, graceful, and excellent fashion, yours is worth ten aunt. God give me joy to wear it, for my heart is exceeding heavy. <laughs> Twill be heavier soon by the weight of a man. Fie upon thee, art not ashamed. Of what, lady? Of speaking honorably? Is not marriage honorable in a beggar? Is not your lord honorable without marriage? I think you would have me say, saving your reverence, a husband. When bad thinking do not rest true speaking, I'll offend nobody. Is there any harm in the heavier for a husband? None, I think. And it be the right husband and the right wife. Otherwise, tis light and not heavy. <laughs> Ask my lady Beatrice else who she comes. Good morrow, Cars. <laughs> Good morrow, sweet hero. Why, how now? Do you speak in a sick tune? I am out of all other tune, methinks. Oh, claps into light and love. That goes without a burden. Do you sing it, and I'll dance it. Ye light and love with your heels. Then, if your husband has stables enough, you'll look, he shall lack no bonds. Oh, illegitimate construction. I scorn that with my heels. It is almost five o'clock, cousin. It is time you are ready. By my troth, I'm exceeding ill. Hey ho. For a hawk, a horse, or a husband? For the letter that begins them all. H. Well, then you not be turned Turk. There's no more sailing by the star. What means the fool trowel? Nothing I, but God send everyone their heart's desire. <laughs> These gloves the Count sent me, they are an excellent perfume. <coughs> I am stuffed, cousin. I cannot smell. Made and stuffed. There's a goodly catching of a cold. Oh, God help me. God help me. How long have you professed apprehension? Why? Even since you left it, doth not my wit become me rarely? It is not seen enough. You should wear it in your cap. By my troth, I am sick. Get you then some of this distilled carduous benedictus and lay it to your heart. Tis the only thing for a qualm. <laughs> there thou prickest her with a thistle. <laughs> benedictus. Why benedictus? You have some moral in this benedictus. Moral? No, by my troth, I have no moral meaning. I meant plain holy thistle. You may think perchance that I think you are in love. Nay, Barlow, I am not such a fool to think what I list, nor I list not to think what I can, nor indeed I cannot think, if I would think my heart out of thinking, that you are in love, that you will be in love, or that you can love. Yet Benedict was such another. And now has he become a man? He swore he would never marry. And yet now, in despite of his heart, he eats his meat without grudging. And how you may be converted, I know not. But methinks you look with your eyes as other women do. What pace is this that thy tongue keeps? Not a false gallop. Matter withdraw. The prince, the count, Signor Benedict, Don John, and all the gallants of the town are come to fetch you to church. Help me to dress good cars, good Meg, good Ursula. 